This video is intended to give an introduction to the SOLIDWORKS integration for DDM. It will cover creating a part record, adding it to an assembly, creating a drawing and releasing the drawing and assembly. Finally, it will cover making a change to the assembly and up issuing the changes. So currently we have the DDM user interface open. We're going to close this so that we have SOLIDWORKS open. And here I have a part that is nearly complete. We're just going to finalize the design by adding some chamfers. And these are going to be one millimeter. So if we complete this, we can now save the newly created part back to DDM. In SOLIDWORKS we have a PDM ribbon that gives us all of the commands that we need to interact between SOLIDWORKS and DDM. And for this part we're just going to save it back to the database. So first of all we make a local copy on our machine and then the part properties window opens allowing us to assign a part number and description to the new part. So we're going to use auto numbering to assign a new number and we're going to give this a description which is wrist pin and we can complete the save by clicking on OK. So our part is now stored to DDM. If we close our SOLIDWORKS window, return to DDM and just go to recent items then we can see that the wrist pin is at the top of our recent items list. If we look at the properties of it, then we can see all of the information relating to the part, including the material that it's been made out of and who created it and when it was created. We're now going to add this part into an assembly that we've been working on. So if we load the assembly, we can now go back to DDM to add this part into the assembly. So we load the part into session. And then we can assemble the part. With the part now added, we just store the changes back to DDM and our assembly is updated. So next we're going to create a drawing of the assembly. So we'll create a drawing from the assembly, open a template and we'll add some views to the drawing. So for the demonstration that will be enough and again using the PDM ribbon bar we're going to save the drawing back to DDM. Again we make a local copy and our drawing properties window opens. It's selected to use the same drawing number as the model but we could change that if we wanted and it's used the same description. So if we click on OK our drawing should be updated and stored back to the database. The drawing title block should be populated for us, giving the drawing number, the issue description and who created it and when it was created. If we close this from session and return to DDM, then we have the drawing at the top of our recent items list. You can see that we can start to understand relationship information in this user interface. So if I look at the drawing, I can see the related model. And if I drill into the model, then I can see the items that have been used to create this assembly. In a similar way, if we look at the assembly, and if I look under the relations of the assembly, I can see the associated drawings. If I want to preview the drawing, then I can right click and select preview and a preview of the drawing opens uh, and the drawing is actually watermarked to indicate that this is a work in progress drawing uh, and shouldn't be used in production. 
to complete this work we're now going to release this assembly so if we right click on the either the drawing or the assembly and we'll go to the release manager by selecting to change state if we expand all then we will see any related drawings to the models in this assembly and in this case there aren't any so we've got our new drawing and the assembly and we've got the wrist pin that have been added to this assembly so we're going to change the state and set the state as released and we can add some notes here and then click on OK to complete these changes and our assembly has now been released if we load the assembly again to look at making a change to this we can double click on it to load it into SOLIDWORKS and what we're going to do is to make a change to the pin so if we open the pin now this part is currently released if we have a look at the properties of the part then we can see that it is released which means that we can't make changes to it we can also see where this item is used and so if we look where it's used we can see that it's used on this assembly uh, and so we have this assembly open in session if we make a change to the part we're going to put a cut through the part Ten point five, and this will go completely through the part. Okay, so we know that we can't save this part back to the database or, or save the changes to the part. If we try and save it, then we get a message that this is modified but unable to save. So what we're going to do is to use the save as function to make a change to this part so we're going to give it a new number and we'll change the description at the same time so if we click on OK our new part is created and if we return to the assembly then the assembly now contains the new uh, wrist pin with the center bore. So this assembly is also released uh, and we can check by looking at the properties so this is a released assembly so in this case we're going to create a new issue of the assembly before we do that we're going to load the drawing of the assembly into session and now from our PDM ribbon we're going to select to save a new issue so we select both the drawing and the assembly go to the next issue and we're going to fill in change reason information so this is uh, a change order and we're going to give a short description which is we can give a long description to give more information about the change that we're making and then we can click on OK to complete our changes So the drawing is updated and we have the new drawing open in session. If we look at the drawing title block we can see that we now have issue 2 of the assembly and if we look at the revision history we can see information about the change that's been made. So we can close this from session. We've completed our work in SOLIDWORKS now and if we return to DDM here's the new issue of the piston head assembly you can see because we have a new issue that is work in progress the previously released issue has changed to under review indicating that there is a, a later issue of this assembly available what we're going to take a look at now is the DDM bill of materials editor and if we right click on this assembly and look at the bill of materials then we see the bill of materials of this assembly that we've just created including the the rings the oil ring and the compression ring 
Now what we may want to do with our bill of materials is add things to it that we haven't modeled in the CAD environment and the bill of materials editor uh, allows us to do this. It also allows us to remove things that we may have modeled in the CAD environment but that we don't want on our bill of materials and to do that we would use the function to hide items. But we're going to have a look at how we add an item that we've not modeled in SOLIDWORKS. So I'm going to minimize this and I'm going to go to my category browser to look for a lubricant that we want to add to our bill of materials. And the lubricant that we're going to add is this one. To add this to my bill of materials we can do it in a number of ways. We can drag and drop from one window to another but we're going to use the copy reference function which we could also do with a keyboard shortcut of control C we return to the bill of materials editor we can now paste this component into our bill of materials. Because this wasn't modeled in the CAD environment we don't know anything about the quantity so in this case we're going to add a quantity of 15 milliliters and we're going to add some notes and our changes are now complete. So we're going to apply the changes and then click on OK to complete our bill of materials. Now that these changes are complete if we go back to recent items what we can do is release the new assembly. So we're, again we're going to change the state and we're going to select the new items that are in this assembly and we're going to release them. Click on OK and our assembly is now uh, released and we can see that the old issue of this, the assembly is now marked as superseded. If we look at the properties of this item we can see the related change notes with information about the change that has been applied and finally what we can do is if we look at the bill of materials editor we can compare this bill of materials with the earlier issue to see the changes that have been made to this bill of materials. So an overview of the SOLIDWORKS integration for DDM showing how to create parts, drawings and assemblies, how to release information, modify bills of materials and up issue changes to those components.